Well, thank you very much for taking time out. Um, today's guest is none other than Jim Monkey Spass Five Thousand. Yay! Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, are you okay? Are you all right? You had a good all right. day. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Fine. I like your your white headphones. <laughs> it frames my feet perfectly. <laughs> and you and um, you've got a guitar in the background. Are you going to play as a tune? Nope. Or is it just <laughs> is it like just a uh, um, green screen? It's just um, de- for, <laughs> for decoration purposes. <laughs> That's it. Well, thank you for taking time out. Obviously, you've got um, a, quite a big YouTube channel that I've been watching for years and years. In fact, it's probably since you started, nearly. Um, I was I was looking at it today and it, it made me laugh. Um, your first ever video, do you know what that was? Uh, no, but I've done some weird videos when the first couple, it's like it's like I just discovered YouTube and I wasn't quite sure where I was <laughs> going to go with it. So, <laughs> and that, honestly, I don't know. Well, it, it's funny you should say that because I think your first one was an iPhone 4 colour case review and it's ah. got like 37,000 views. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was... Really? Uh, yeah, it was some weird little thing. It went around the iPhone, and uh, it stopped. I think it was the iPhone four. There was a like a whole scandal about it at the time. If you held the phone a certain way, it stopped the reception. So that thing stopped it, and it was the only video of it at the time. Well, well, I'm going to stop doing gameplay videos and just do iPhone re- cover reviews because obviously it's the it's the future. <laughs> it's the future. I don't know. No, I was surprised as well. It it did sort of go go down from there when we were videos like called uh, "Paying to Piss." 20p, 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 which I've been watching all day and it's been making me chuckle all day. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, 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 really, I referenced that the other day, actually, about paying the peak, so it needs a pee somewhere else, it depends. <laughs> it's gone so up. It's gone up. <laughs> it's gone up, it depends. It, it was just how, how um, enraged you were. You were like ready for going to kick the door down to get in for free. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I. It's one of those things that I, I that was like work clothes and stuff, eh? So I uh, try to be careful, not be careful at the same time. Yeah, you looked about twenty then, probably. I've looked this. I've looked like this <laughs> since I was three. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, obviously on your channel. If anybody who watches you know that you've got a bit of affiliation for the spectrum, which we'll come on to later. But can you remember what your first sort of gaming memory was or your first time you saw something you thought wow that looks good um first well probably like a lot of people was like um is it, is it astro bars so it was a little grandstand thing the yeah, circle yeah. do that screen yeah that was probably first my first um video game experience if you like sort of thing and then um which is obviously pretty cool but after that I had the Tower 2600 and whatnot, but after that, the probably the first time that I was really like, wow, was I was at a friend's house, and um, it was one of the first time I'd been at his house, and he, he pulled out this little beige-coloured machine, and he was like, I'll show you this, and he put Ghostbusters on, and it had the little bouncing ball popping along, the, and I was like, whoa, and he went, no, I've not got time to play that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally for years, I never even know what it looked like, <laughs> other than the end. That's like, cheers, mate. That is a right tease, isn't it? Here's what you could have won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was that the there's a Commodore sixty four then he was showing you all? Yeah. 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 So, so even after seeing that, you still went down the spectrum route. Were you like deranged as a child? It's <laughs> had common sense. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things, like it's just the way it fell, eh? Like um where I lived, one of the friends down the road had one. And then that's that's where it sort of started from there. But all my friends had one, apart from one friend, I think, basically, to be honest. Yeah, and, and, and I jest, because at the, I, I, I like the Spectrum as well. There were some good games on Spectrum. I used to love Manic Miner. I used to, uh, I've said this on some of the other interviews I've done, because our, we, our black and white portable telly was really close to the next door's wall, they must have had their Spectrum set up with their telly, and you could see the RF signal coming through, like ghosting through. And we used yeah. to watch him playing Manic Miner before we got a console or computer. <laughs> so I, sad we I, were. Saw, I saw Spectrum before I even knew what Spectrum was. Like I was at another one of my friends' houses when I was a little boy, and um, there was this little computer, like year big, with squidgy keys on it. I had no idea where it was, and it had um, a cassette of Never Ending Story next to it. And I was like, whoa, what's that? And again, I never saw it. Never, We never played it or anything. 
but that was, that was before I actually even knew what it was. Um, were you always into computers? I know were you more into like football or stuff like that, or no? I was always into computers. Like before I had anything, I remember like seeing like adverts for things on TV as a child, and I was always, always, always sort of fascinated. And then even growing up. Like I had maybe a spectrum, but other people had this, or we'd seen this, or do you know what I mean? There was always the excitement about the next thing. But no, I was always, always very sort of um, excited about what was out there, basically. And um, obviously, then it, it sort of took off from there into your, into your later years as now. So obviously, you, you collect for the spectrum. I know you have you. You're going for the set of is it Hit Squad title? Yeah, yeah. Like everybody. I'm sure I'd done it first, and then um, <laughs> <laughs> everybody's like, oh, "I'm collecting a hit squad." I'm like, "Great, it's gonna make it harder for me." But thanks. So, so what you're saying is you're the reason why some of the games are now like a million pounds. <laughs> even even since when I started collecting them, and I I never started collecting them that long ago, but some of the ones that I've got, like the price of them are silly now. You yeah. sort of grudge it in a sense for a little audio cassette that's got magnetic tape on it that may or may not work. Who knows? How long is it going to work for in the next five years? Who knows? Yeah. But do you want to complete the collection? Yeah, and how, how far off are you from completing the collection? Are you quite close? Or? I think I've got, I'll tell you, right, because I'm really sad in this sense. You've got I a spreadsheet, have... haven't you? Hit <laughs> hey, squad list. I'm going right, to terminate this want... interview now. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's a bit funny because there's some weird ones that aren't really part of the Hit Squad collection, but they are, but they're educational ones. So if we don't include them, I need uh, uh, 15. That's pretty good then. And how many is in total? About 100? 119, and that's me including like a couple of compilation things. And um, there's these things called Fun School 2, which are like some weird things that realistically that nobody would ever buy, but you have to because it's part of a collection. Yeah. Any that's left now are like they they never come up, or you get hammered on an auction and you miss it, or it just goes for a wee bit more than you want to pay for it. But there's loads that like literally people who are collecting for it. There's loads. Lo- must be quite a few of us waiting for this one game or do you know I mean a group of games yeah. popping up. It's whoever's the most silly that wants to buy it, basically. So you'll be getting it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I like the prank myself but i'm like, like if i could start getting out of bed i'm just like <laughs> screw you yeah screw you, screw you. <laughs> i can imagine you you're like one of these people that you know when they've had a drink and they don't go on ebay just for that reason because they end up paying loads for like something <laughs> i have stood in a bar um one of the times i was at black play blackpool i stand like so somebody talked to them and i was just like yeah 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 look and i just bought it whatever it was on my phone so drunk. <laughs> Just because we were talking about it, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, crazy. It, it, it's it's because I do remember the hit school. I rem- actually remember the fun school games because they were like, like you say, edu- educational ones. They were on the Amiga as well, I think, in the big boxes. Um, mm. And they were like fun school one, fun school two, and each different one had a different age range, I think. Yeah, like, I never like, heard of them or seen them before until I started collecting. Like, I think I've got one of three or four that I need in total, something like that. That's probably the reason why they're more expensive because obviously, like you say, they were educational and people probably didn't buy them, so they didn't make as many. I don't, I don't know. I'm just assuming, but aye, anything that's not going to sell much was whether it's it was either complete crap when it was released or uh, it came out at the very end of the life yeah. cycle of the machine. That's like Adam's Family, for example. I've got that, and it's one one of the last games, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And what would you say your most favourite Spectrum game is if you had to pick one? Oh, um, it's ah. See, it's a funny one because there's ones that are nostalgic and then there's ones that are good. <laughs> so it's a bit like... Well, you can have one of each then. You can have a nostalgic one and you can have a good, good programmed one. Alright. I would say uh, probably uh, it'd have to be Renegade, like the first one. I know it's probably not the best. Of, I was going to say the three. There's, there's not really three Renegade games. There's two. <laughs> the third is not a game. Um, aye, that's an absolute classic for me. Um, and also probably Desi, like the first one, I'll say as well. Um, one of my fondest memories. 
Dizzy, yeah. I think that was a bit of a game changer, weren't it, when it came out? Like... Yeah. I seriously think people just teased me as a child. I was at somebody's house and they, they pulled out this little grey <laughs> keyboard thing with a tape on it. From, and I was like, whoa, what's that? It's like, it's a Spectrum. We'll we play a game. I was like, yeah. And I picked up Dizzy and went, can we play this? And they went, no, it takes too long. And they put all <laughs> mummy on instead. <laughs> you think to have like, this effect on people? Was it like anything you wanted, they did the exact opposite? Just like to tease me, I've got no idea. <laughs> it probably explains a lot of why or the way I am now. Yeah, you're buying everything up on it so they can't play it. You get your own back. Yeah, totally. Um, I remember the Renegade games. I did like Target Renegade and Renegade. And I think number three, the one that one that everybody ate had dinosaurs in it, didn't it? And you were kicking dinosaurs and stuff. <laughs> I don't even know what. I, I, I can't even explain that game. I've got no idea. No yeah, idea. It's shocking. It was it Renegade 1? Cool. Arcade classic. Renegade 2. Nice home port or follow on from it. Renegade 3. It's like it, they gave it to the Buck Experience guy. <laughs> burn <laughs> no with idea. fire. <laughs> sorry, it's, what? It says burn with fire. <laughs> ah, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Ah, that's like. I don't know if it was one of these things, you know, you see a lot of the time where games maybe start off as, a, as something else completely different. And then they've maybe sat for a while and then they've gone, oh, I can use that for this. And they just change something up. I've got no idea about that game. I think it's probably like a lot of games at the time. They probably get a couple of hits with some, and then they just keep going and going, and then they just end up ruining it. Like Lotus 3 on the Amiga, that, they ruined that. It went too far. Instead of stopping yeah. at 2, which was a good one, they had to keep going. But... What gets me, though, is people play these games. So, like, the, the, the people that like, uh, made Renegade 1, cool, Renegade 2, cool, made Renegade 3, somebody played it and went, <laughs> yeah, let's sell that, release it. No. Oh. Yeah. Well, you've only got to look at some of the Jaguar games to think what in the name of whoever were they thinking about when they released this. Bucket of turd, that is. <laughs> but you thought it's right, they must have meetings to discuss what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and, like, right, showcase the game you've written then. And you're not telling me they sit there and think, yes, this is amazing. This is definitely going to beat the likes of Street Fighter 2 and stuff and then they release it. But you've seen, I watched one of your other videos recently, I can't remember who it was, but you saw um, magazines back in the day. I think they were like, yeah, this game's 93 out of 100, smash hit. And no, really, the game doesn't work properly. Or uh, you just, yeah, you're, I think you're tricked into buying some of these games. Either the screen, the screen art on the back, completely wrong, or the magazine reviews, completely yeah. wrong as well. But definitely, I was talking to Dave Perry, and he was saying that um, it was such a balancing act between... Because obviously they've got to keep the advertisers happy because they're advertising yeah. in their magazine as well. So if they like shoe a game because it's really bad, but then on the flip side they've got to keep the readers happy because if nobody buys the magazine, it's the same thing. So I thought yeah. they were they're in a bit of a catch twenty two in reality. But yes, yeah, some of the some reviews are really funny. I used to end, like the zero ones and the Amiga Power ones because they didn't seem to pull the punches. They actually mm. wrote, wrote what it said. It's the way it should be, but you can see if there was a, a publisher or whatnot and they give you a game review and you slate it, you're probably not going to see another game by them. It's it's not right, but it's probably the way it worked. Yeah, so somebody, I don't know who it was, was saying that um, sometimes they didn't even get the actual um, games in. They just got, like, screenshots, and that's what they reviewed the games on, basically pictures. <laughs> I watched your video. It was one of your other interviews. I watched that. Aye. Yeah. I saw, aye. Some game that the tape didn't work or something yeah. like that. Aye. <laughs> I was like, what? Can you but, imagine yeah. that now? You'd probably get done for like uh, misleading people or. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't be able to do it nowadays. It'd be like <laughs> protests on Facebook. <laughs> people burning things, walking down <laughs> protests, marches, people being offended left, right, and centre. But yeah. So moving on from the Spectrum then into the sort of the console era, did you have like the SNES and Mega Drive and stuff at the time, or what? What was your first like console memories? My whole childhood is a bit of a, a funny situation, and this, this conversation could go anywhere. But I had basically everything. But if you ask me how I got it, I've got no <laughs> idea. Did I sell drugs on the street corner? I've got no idea. Did it come for Christmas? I've got no idea. I just had it one day. It was in my house. Just turned I've up. I've got no idea. <laughs> now, nah, obviously, um, I started with the Spectrum, obviously, but um, I did, or sorry, uh, primarily started with the Atari 2600. Uh, that's obviously console and Spectrum. But I, I did have the SNES, Mega Drive, Master System, NES, um, 
and then so on from there, like PS1, PS2, N64, do 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 do. Aye. And, and did you, have you kept all the kept them all, or did you sort of move them on to upgrade? Or I always got rid of them. Like um, there was always, I, I think, he would even like swap them amongst our circle of friends or sold them. So that maybe we one machine that would go there, and then you'd swap it, and you swap it to somebody's brother's friend. And they swap it to a friend, and you decided. I'm sure that at one point there was an Amiga 600 amongst us that somehow like bounced repeatedly <laughs> anywhere and everywhere. But no, always um, sold them on, swapped them on. Um, but even like, for example, before I went to uni, I had a PS1. What did I do with that PS1? I've got no idea. I probably sold it before I went to uni. I've got no <laughs> idea. But I never, never, I've not, I've, I've sadly never kept anything original. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I always yeah. sw- swapped it whatnot to get the next thing sort of thing uh, and uh, yeah we, i've talked to a few people about this i think at the time you did do that like i remember selling my amiga and i wish so i hadn't bought you sold it because you wanted to get the 1200 then you sold that to get the pc and that's how it was in them days because money yeah. wasn't freely available like you know what i mean you know you weren't old enough to earn lots of money i suppose and it's like you just did yeah. what you could to get the next thing yeah totally i think uh i you were either young or you had a part-time job but you didn't have much money or like myself, single parent. So if it was up to my mum, I would have probably had this spectrum until I was 18. You know what I mean? It's one of these things. What do you need another one for? That one plays games. Yeah. Oh, it's not the same, mum, but never mind. Yeah. But yeah. You see, I wasn't going to bring it up, but do you think that's what's led on to you selling things now? It's just a big part of it. It's what you do. You said we weren't going to talk about this. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, I said I weren't going to talk about the internet. <laughs> no, I, oh, do, 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 do you know what I mean? Because I, I think everybody goes through it, and I've done it as well, where you buy things and you, you store things, and then you just one day you think, oh my God, why have I got all this stuff everywhere? It's just taking space up. See, see if I could go back realistically and say, right, when was the last time I sold anything that was to do with video games retro, modern? We're probably talking fucking two years ago, at least three years ago. <laughs> it's Is that still because of lockdown? <laughs> what? Is that because of lockdown? No. <laughs> it's still the thing that somehow haunts me yeah. by a few cretins that obviously I know they're my friends and like, I'll do something, then somebody will just put up a random comment, oh, how are you selling it? Oh. It always makes me chuckle because <laughs> it's like a snowball effect. One person will post something then by the end yeah. of the post is about a thousand comments that say the same thing. I've not sold, honestly, I've not sold anything for a long time. Uh, really, probably two or three years, something like that. Try to be more sensible. I'm, 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 the problem is I'm probably impulsive in this, in, in both in, in the buying and selling sort of thing. So I'll maybe decide I want something, so I'll buy loads of stuff. And I'll maybe sit on my shelf for ages and I'll go, oh, I don't need that. And then I'll sell it. It's not um, financially driven in any sort of way. It's just... If it's sitting there unused for ages, but now I'm um, the difference being in the spectrum games, I would never sell them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do collect them, but I've not got rid of anything for a long time. I've not got much apart from spectrum games just now, to be fair. Yeah, it, it, it's um, it's one of them things. I think people like say go through phases and do whatever, and I think as well, you're probably keeping stuff now because the prices of retro is going mental. It's just going yeah, up and up and yeah. up. Definitely, there's like um. Oh, prime example, a few years ago, I bought an Amiga 1200 for £70 with an accelerator card, with a CD drive, um, with an absolute crap load of CD32 games with it. And like, I did sell the games at the time and I made like four or £500 out of the games alone easily. But if I'd kept them, do you know what I mean? Well, if you want to sell it me for 70 I'm quite happy to pay it. I've already sold it. <laughs> okay. that, was be- that was before that two or three yeah. years all oh, right was that that oh you is. <laughs> but you see you're at, that that now would go for like hundreds and hundreds J- just the accelerator card and the cd drive alone Aye. you know what i mean Aye. that's the sort of thing you start kicking yourself because like recently i've been looking ah oh, i've got an amiga 500 but i'd be like ah oh, quite like a 1200 but that would easily what uh, four times the price something like that easily yeah yeah Swings and roundabouts. Easy if come, easy go. Now, if we all knew now what we knew then, little, little Jimmy Child would never have thrown his Donkey Kong Country box in the bin. Yes. I mean? Yeah, yeah. How many people did that because they just took space up and they wanted to get rid of it? I've got, this, I've got a bizarre 
very fresh memory of doing it. The box was getting tattered, open and closing, open and closing, open and closing it. And I just thought, what's the point? I'll just bend it. Yeah. Okay. And now, look, you are worth quite a bit with them boxed. And yeah. I think, in some ways, Nintendo putting them in cardboard boxes was a bit silly anyway because they were going to get tatty eventually. At least in a yeah. plastic box, it's a bit more protected and the box is protected. But Yeah, Sega definitely went the better way with it, with packaging. Until they made the Dreamcast and then they couldn't get into them because they hated them cases. <laughs> yeah, Dream... <laughs> I don't know what it is with Dreamcast cases. But it's also even, um, maybe going off way, off way off tangent, but PS1 cases... Because we live in Europe, there's how many languages? So you end up with a stupid huge <laughs> case with a manual that's thicker than the case, and then the case gets cracked. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's that that moment when you're opening the case and it, it sticks halfway open, and you're like, you can't go back, you can't go forwards. You know, whichever way you go, it's going to break. <laughs> and you're just like, oh my god. Also, if you drop a PS1 case, you know it's broken. Yeah, straight across the middle as well. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Whereas <laughs> if it was a single dual CD case. It might have a slightly better chance of surviving it, but yeah, I because the, the PlayStation cases in America were bigger, weren't they? I used to, they weren't they like bigger case, like A five sizes. No, were they, were they, or are they Hold like on. smaller? Oh, a couple, <clears throat> and just like single jewel. All oh, right. Oh yeah. So like literally, it was like a music CD. Do you know what I mean? It is. It's like, uh, yeah, like an album, isn't it? A music album. Yeah, album. You did get, I think you did. If you know, you know, you get some th- long box 3DO games, is what they're called. I think you got some PS1 games like that. Right, right. That's probably where I've seen them then. You know, we got the sort of cardboard boxes for the sort of same shape yeah. as a CD in this country on some early releases. I think they got the same, but like taller, a yeah. bit like the 3DO boxes, I think. Yeah. Some of the cardboard ones. Yeah, because they, they were a bit like satin type size, weren't they? I think. Aye, aye. So. Which is cool. It's a bit different, but yeah, the American, probably Japanese as well. To be fair, much much better than the just nice slim f- fit in a normal CD. Yeah. Hold anything apart from anything else. <laughs> so I bet, like, yeah. I bet you're right. What you say. So the reason we probably had the thick ones were because of the manuals being like thicker than the get. Than the right, exactly. Well, it's, it's easier to do that rather than. Right, let's have a certain manual for the UK, a certain manual for France. Yeah, stick it all in so, one. And that's when we used to get manuals. So we used to, well, it's actually when we used to get <laughs> actual media. Because <laughs> now it's all downloaded. Aye. It. <laughs> aye, that's another topic. Aye. <laughs> so, Jim, what's your opinion of future games? No, we'll get, we'll get there later. Yeah, it is. It's, it, every, we've talk, I've talked about it to everybody. Who, lots of different opinions in reality. Some like it, some don't. And that's fair enough. It's just... It's the future, isn't it? And I don't think there's much we can do to stop it, unfortunately. It's what um, people won't know any different as well. Kids. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? My, my children could probably unlock an iPad before they could talk. Yeah. And it's those kind of kids who just click on an app, want to download, expect the same games. That's just how it works. Yeah. But I think that, especially on the apps and on the phones, it dilutes that experience and that quality of games because when you've got 100 games being released every day, how do you know what's good and what's not? And I think the, the good games sort of get swallowed up with the bad games. Aye, aye. Certainly, if you go into any stores, uh, storefront, whether it was Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, or whatnot, go to new new releases. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, and it's like I, I was reading yesterday that Xbox Live is coming to Steam, but I don't know how that's going to work, and I don't really know what it meant. But the, there are talks at the moment. I don't know. Uh, I've not heard about that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly what it what it means because I was thinking, well, it can't be that all Steam games are free because there's millions of them. But I don't know if it means some of them, some Xbox Live games will be available via Steam. If you, I, I don't know. It was just a, it was on um, one of the internet pages I was reading. Uh, uh, integrate it. Do you mean the not the Xbox Live, but the Game Pass? Maybe integrate that into Steam. I don't know. Yeah, where they have so many free each month and then they go back into yeah. st- it it's interesting that microsoft seemed to be leading the charge with the online game pass type thing i think that i i'm a, i've got everything but um i I'm a, I'm a big fan of what microsoft doing they're doing like get an xbox get game pass like i've got a stupid pc in the sense that it's 
basically the best of the best but typically i'll set my bum there and play on the xbox because it's just convenience and i've got game pass and i just click 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 and yeah. I, free. a new game came out just two weeks ago three weeks ago pay for it on the pc or i'll play it for free on the xbox yeah have you got pc game pass as well or not i have got the ultimate thing but there's some games that are only yeah yeah on there and not pc etc yeah. you can sort of see where it's going they were obviously wanting to integrate cross play and that's why they trying it's because they've just brought was it ea play or ubisoft yeah. or one of them onto game pass well, as well ea play is and there's rumors that ubisoft plus or ubisoft player whatever it's going to whatever it's called that there's rumors that that's going to go on it as well so then so. they will have a sort of monopoly really of most of the streaming game system it's the best deal in gaming now i sound like i work for microsoft but... <laughs> <laughs> how much is bill paying you is it sponsored this video <laughs> <laughs> you have to you have to say that at least six times through the whole video for the whole interview. <laughs> Microsoft best deal in gaming. <laughs> Just repeatedly. Why, why does it keep flashing up on my screen? <laughs> Subliminal messages. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it, it's it's the sign of the times. I think, and I think ultimately, and somebody else was saying this, but I can't remember who it was. That eventually. When you buy a new console, it won't be you buy the console. You'll just be buying a box to stream the game, literally, and you'll be streaming it from some super fast server somewhere, and that'll be how we play games. Aye, when the when the the internet infrastructure gets to that stage, cool. I'm all up for it. Whatever, as long as it works completely flawless, like it's like you're sitting normally playing a console game that's sitting in front of you or loaded onto that machine. If it's no different, then aye, that's that. But that will be the way it will get there, whether it's realistically it's probably quite a wee bit way off because there's well i have my internet issues but america for example there's loads and loads of rural places there and they wouldn't yeah. be able to do it either speaking of the internet i'm not going to say anything about it the internet but your um you've put your name down for the starlink i believe the your early adopters package yeah i'd put my name down for anything i'd put my name down for a bit of string if it worked better than my internet <laughs> Are you looking forward to that? Because it's quite exciting that that you're like one of the trial people, if you like. Yeah, and as soon as I got word that you could actually, apart from the closed beta, if you like, where there was like 10 testers in the UK, I think initially, something like that. Apart from that, as soon as I got word that you could place an order, I was like, ban, place an order. But yeah, I think it's um, a big game changer, massively. Like I watch a few people on YouTube uh, regularly that I know that have got it down south. They're regularly hitting speeds of 300, 400 megabits per second, stuff like that. So, and it's Elon, isn't it? Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll get there. So, no, it'll be good. It's like, for example, I live here, but I'm thinking about building a house up there. But it's still in the same area. I don't need to get somebody to come and install fiber at the new house. I just move the dish, yeah. plunk it on the new house, and that's it. But I think it'll be a game changer. It'll be interesting to see. But I think in, I said, mid to late year, so I'm hoping don't know three four months hopefully i, I think it and um, i think it's definitely going to be a game changer i can see it already because I've, I've watched quite a few videos like yourself and um even like they've been like when they've had heavy heavy snow and the dishes covered in it it still works fine yeah. and, and, it, and for something that good because like even with sky when it starts to rain too fast you start to get splatters and stuff on the screen but if it's working without that then he's obviously yeah. onto a winner isn't he and he's yeah it's probably costing him money but i think the dividends and the final side will pay massive I think, I realistically, long term, whether it's 10 years down the line, the whole world's infrastructure in terms of internet communications could be Starlink, Elon Musk's company. Do you know what I mean? The man's mental. He's a, he's a borderline <laughs> madman stroke genius, whatever way you want to put it. But he's got unlimited money, isn't it? Yeah. If he wants to do it, he can do it. Yeah. can make monkeys play pong with their brains. Yeah, I you watched that? that as well the other day. That is scary, yeah. though, isn't it? It is, but it's it's... It's good in the sense that he's not only twenty, so he's 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 only got a limited lifespan, which is good because he's he's a bit bonkers and he could get quite dangerous. Do you know what I mean if he's got another forty years from now with the technology that will come and whatnot? So yeah, because I suppose at some point power can go to your head if you create crazy things. They'll probably end up on Mars anyway. So <laughs> I'll sign up for that as well. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm off to Mars to get better internet. <laughs> <laughs> I can get better in that on Mars than what I can here. 
it, it is quite surreal watching the rockets land. I, I, I never forget when those two landed together. It's almost like something from a sci-fi film. It, it's just it amazing. Look real. Yeah. It, it does. It totally looks like CGI. Like I've watched a few of them repeatedly. Even like the last one of the SN10 flights or nine or whatever it was, the way it flips in there and then the boosters kick in and it, it just looks completely fake. Yeah. But not, but it does. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's amazing really. I think it needed something like some something like that, somebody like him to push the boundaries more now. Because I think yeah. the likes of NASA have sort of stalled and stay up they, they stopped a bit, didn't they? Yeah, they they sort of moved a bit forwards, but not at the pace that he's moving, nowhere near. Yeah. yeah. So but, um He's an interesting chap, definitely. So you, you touched on your powerhouse of a PC. Is that PC? Have you always been into that PC side of things? Is that something that's always interested you, or is it something that came on later in life? Or um, sort of later to a sense. So obviously, um, my first P. Well, we'll go back to high school then, I suppose. Um, obviously, you had PCs, RM Nimbuses, or whatever the hell they were called back in the day. And um, you played a lot of the games, and there were some weird cyan colours. I don't know what the colour mode was. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? There's loads of different things. Um, so I sort of clocked onto it then. Then there'd be like this one computer. We, we, I went to computer club. It basically, it means you went to the computer rooms at lunchtime and got to mess about with the computers. And it meant so you went in for dinner for first as well. Say again? Did it mean you went in for dinner first as well, like at our school? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you did it for, isn't it? <laughs> So we got a taste for it then, and then I got a. I, I, I was at university, and I remember the first, one of the first couple of weeks, I was sitting in a lecture or whatnot, and the guy says, If you're not a computer, you need to get a computer. So I basically went home from my mum and said, Mum, I need a computer. They were like, Right, that's fine. And then um, ordered a computer, and then on the back of that, I discovered Napster. I discovered you could download emulation. I could discover you could download full games for free and stuff like that but that's probably where i got into it sort of thing full games for free you mean like worse type things or just yeah <laughs> like um half-life yeah <laughs> i think that was one of the first games i acquired i, I used to hate the worst site so be be because you'd, you'd click on the website just have a look and then a million pop-ups would come up and before you know it you'd got a full screen of everything and you could get control of it <laughs> You're randomly <laughs> clicking while randomly hitting Alt and F4. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more and more and more are coming up. Yeah. Right. And it literally gets that many, you can't even have them on your taskbar. But it's just like little dots because you've got that many open. Yeah. And then you get that, um, oh, there's a famous error, you've seen pictures of it, um, where you get a box that comes up, you start moving the box, and then all of a sudden the box is drawing the, the box, wherever you move the box, because yeah. the computer runs out of memory. It's like, oh, yeah. great. Yeah. It looks like Deluxe Paint where you do that perspective thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at university is when I started getting into PCs a bit. Um, but apart from that, uh, before, just, I suppose just before that, when I was at high school, one of my friends had a couple of PCs, and he had Command and & Conquer, and we used to always play with them in that sense, play against each other. But I, uh, anything, anything's tech, well, uh, technology, I like fiddling with, playing with. Yeah, it's, um, I, I, PCs, they, they, I, so you get into them and I think you get hooked on them and th it's a dangerous place as well because you can like get to a point where you actually spend lots of money because obviously technology, you buy a PC today, it's out of date tomorrow because something else has come along. Well, that's the thing, literally, my PC, I've got an, an obtainium graphics card that nobody can buy just now because you just can't buy them for anything just now. But what do I do with it? I don't know. Some Excel spreadsheets. That's about it. <laughs> but if a new one came out six months time, I was like, oh, I need a new one for my Excel spreadsheets. You do use it for work as well, then. You use it. For probably work. use it more for work than anything else, to be honest with you. Massively so. But probably probably because I'm sitting here when I am working so long. All day. I don't want to sit here at night. Join me when I've got some free time. So then that's when I'll sit there and stick the Xbox on or whatever it is. You've got a PlayStation Five as well, I believe, haven't you? As well. Yeah. I was going to say, is it? You used to be able to see it in my camera, but I've moved my desk. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's over there as well. It's a nice ornament as well, along along with the guitar. 
<laughs> you are just like my old mate. He used to buy everything as well. He used to, in fact, he bought. The, he was the first person to get the PlayStation when he bought it from Japan on on like um, whatever import just to play Ridge Racer. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just I just um, like if they released a PlayStation Six tomorrow, I'd be like, oh, I want it. Even if the wife wouldn't, you played your PlayStation Five much? Not really, but I want. I just want it. Is it out of the box yet, Jim? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just want it. I don't know. It's just new things. Eh? You just get. I'm. I'm uh, really bad for getting sucked into the hype and, and stuff. I remember you're, you're that. The, you're the. You're every um, advertiser's dream. Definitely. I remember um, Mario Mario sixty four. Not Mario sixty four, but Mario sixty four. The N sixty four hype because it was delayed. It was Ultra sixty four. Blah, 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 it took forever. That I, I I remember that quite fondly as well. But yeah. Do you work? Because I think you collect the mini consoles as well. You've got a few minis, haven't you? Aye, they are. Yeah. Above my head. So I think I've got them all. Hold on, I'm going to rotate and have a look. Rotate. Um, What was released? Um, There was got... the SNES, NES, uh, PlayStation, Mega Drive, PC Engine, Commodore 64. Yeah, I've got them all. <laughs> Everyone. I've got, I've got NES, NES. I don't think the NES one's been at the box. I've got the Mega Drive. I've got two controllers for that because you got like little USB controllers, um, separate ones. I've got the PlayStation One. It's never been at the box. I've got the PC Engine. It's never been at the box. I've got the Commodore sixty four Maxi. Is it called? Yeah, the one with the keyboard. That's up there. That's still in its um, box that it got delivered in, but it's up there. <laughs> but. To be honest, though, I know it sounds stupid, but the prices of the minis are going through the roof, just like the the original ones. Yeah, it's just like I actually pre-ordered the PS One one because I think what was it, ninety pounds or eighty pounds when it was first released, and I cancelled it because I thought I don't need that. I had a moment of clarity or sense sensibleness, but then um, it was it was really not long after it was released they went, oh, it's fifty pounds. I was like, fuck me, I want that. And then that was it. Yeah. yeah, it literally dropped half in like half price in like about three weeks after release because there were a lot of people yeah. moaning about it. I think it's because in reality they didn't put the games they should have put onto it, so they were just trying to get get it out there before it stalled altogether. Yeah, but the, the good wee machines for there's uh, people that will say why buy this, 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 all those different various little machines you can buy a Raspberry Pi. Ah, you can, you can emulate on a pc you can but it's a cool little thing if you modify it hack it take it away on holiday to a caravan if you're in a caravan something like that a wee machine sorry it's got the aesthetics as well hasn't it the look of it and the feel sort of the feel of it like especially the pads and stuff aye they're very very they're cool wee devices they they weren't made for my son for example do you know what i mean they're made for people like us who's maybe a little bit long in the tooth sort of Nostalgic reasons. You're saying we're old, Jim. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Said so you don't know. No, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting there. The, the, I'm, I'm quite interested in, if it wasn't £90, the Sega Astro City little arcade one. It looks really diggy. Just looks like an, a little mini Astro City. Is it, is it, is it that one that I've not got, actually, just because you mentioned that is the little Neo Geo thing? Is it the same size as that, or is it bigger? Yeah, it's exactly. It looks like a Neo Geo size, but it's shape. It's like obviously the shape of an Astro City arcade cab. It's a lot of money for a little dinky thing like that. It is. It just I don't looks like, cool, though. I don't know. How, I can't mind how much the SNES one was. What fifty pounds or something? Yeah, fifty Maybe. pound. They go for it. The SNES one, the fifty, but they go for about hundred now. That's bonkers. But to be fair, I I think I didn't get the NES one when it first came out, and it took me ages to find one and i think i eventually found one in cx i think i was on holiday somewhere and i walked into cx cx and they had one sitting there before everybody started to sell them at cx and whatnot and i was like yeah, i'll buy that but yeah the the, the, the the i think cx was selling them for like 40 but again they're going for like 70 or 80 now again it's i think they made two did they make two runs of the nez one they made a first run and then they bought some more out a bit later i don't know they're cool with machines though they're cool. A good way of keeping that sort of retro alive. It's same as the um, on like on the Switch with the um, the store that has the old games on. It's a good way of like keeping them in the forefront so people can still play them. Yeah, totally. I like them. 
Do you like, because obviously you've got a Switch as well, as you've got everything else in the world ever. Do you play on that I much? I, I, I don't have a Switch anymore. Fuck. No, I was saying that thing about the North Island thing. I did sell that. <laughs> so, so that was a blatant lie. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Uh, no, I've got a couple of games for it. Funny, funny story. Uh, I sold the Switch uh, to another YouTube uh, gashead. The guy Chuck was yeah, yeah. Stephen sold to him with all my games, and then there's Mario All Stars that's out for it. That's got uh, Galaxy and um, N64 and some sort of other Mario game on it. And it was only ever supposed to be sold for a very limited time, and it was supposed to be a case of right after this time we're no longer selling it. So it came to the last day that it was supposed to be sold, so I bought it, and it's still for sale now. I was like, <laughs> I've not got a Switch, but I bought a game because it wasn't supposed. Uh, See what I but say no, about I, a, a, an advertiser's dream. Just, just keep saying it. Just say it's never coming out again. I know for, for definite one person will buy it. No, but I didn't play it much, and that's why I got rid of it. But I could, I would buy, I'd potentially buy one again if I didn't think there was going to be another one coming out soon-ish. Another Switch or another game? Uh, Switch, another Switch. But I think there'll be a new version coming out this year. So, yeah, because that's the way they sort of go. As, along with a lot of the console companies, they seem to release the main one knowing full well they've got a plan of when the next slimline version is coming out, etc. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Do you still have you still got your, your VR your VR stuff? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how this is going already in the comments. <laughs> Int- so. Interestingly, though, and 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 I had the same. Obviously, you know, I had the same one as yourself, but I got rid of mine as well because it became just a novelty. I enjoyed it at first, and don't get me wrong, I thought it was really good, and I did get that sense of wow, this is good. But there were two reasons: one, I never used it, and two, when I did use it, it made me feel really sick. <laughs> I didn't use mine much. I don't. I don't use a lot of my stuff work much because I work a lot and blah, 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 blah. So I've got very little sort of downtime, if you want to call it that. But I probably used that the least, if you like. It was just sitting there and I was like, I'll just sell it because I couldn't realistically see myself using it much moving forward sort of thing. Yeah. I, I, if they improve it and make it better and they can make it so I don't have to wear my glasses, I think I'd really probably buy another one. But they've got to make the resolution better and make it less spinning around when you're moving about and stuff. Yeah, it's good. I want Ready Player One. What with the that with a pack fitted to your body? Yeah, give me, give me like you know what I mean, a full, full suit that I feel. Living. I know there's like versions of it, but a full suit and like, like yeah, totally immersed. Not like I can still see a wee bit of light out the bottom here, and my child just came in and tapped me on the shoulder, <laughs> and I cramped my pants, and I just punched it. I want, I want like fifty years in the tight future version of it. Or oh, your daughter's in the room videoing you, and you don't know, and then she puts it on Facebook, which my daughter did. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> that was just before was she was evicted, by the way. <laughs> you, ah, you had it. So you, you played the demos when you first set it up and stuff. I take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one where you're dancing with a robot. Yeah. I, w- I was in here by myself, busting moves, and literally my daughter walks in. <laughs> I'm like bending down, swinging my arms, like dancing with a robot. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it and um, we it's sad. Forty year olds doing that in the middle of the room <laughs> it's one of these things as well i don't know obviously vr sort of pop popped up went away popped up went away i don't know if it's going to go away again because it is where it is and if it was going to come back when it's a lot more advanced i don't know i would be it, curious to see what happens with i it. think it needs to, if they can make it like a holodeck that'd be really good elon musk will do it well that's it isn't it yeah when you think about it i don't think you could make it like a holodeck as in you can see things but they could make it so you, a cinema had got like screens all the way around you that'd be quite good and you could look round at how it's being filmed and look at all different things you know because they do that anyway with like google earth and stuff don't they so and you can get 3d yeah. cameras that look all the way around so just just um total recall style you know he sits back in the seat and you get just like that but Without you getting out of the seat again, you just have your wee VR experience and you think you've been walking about, talking about... Yeah, yeah it's the future again. We, we need to get it patented. So Until somebody hit Elon yeah. Musk up, I'll come work from. Sorry. Just going back to your um, YouTube channel, where did the name come from or was it just something you made up 
to get a YouTube name? Um, <clears throat> when I was at uni, um, I mentioned I got a PC and stuff, and a lot of that time when the PC was um, on Yahoo Chat, it was a new cool thing at the time. Me and Andy that we know, um, we spent. He would come over to mine. We would spend loads of time in YouTube chat, ASL, etc. Speaking to girls from left, right, and center. And um, <laughs> at the time, I was at uni. I was nineteen, and I don't know where, but Monkey Nuts nineteen was my username for Yahoo Chat. And then I got an Xbox. I had an Xbox original, if you like. But obviously, there was no real. Well, there was a live service, but I never ever used it or anything like that. And then when I got an Xbox three hundred and sixty, I was like, ha, Monkey Nuts nineteen. I was like, it's not available. I was like, what? And I was like, fine, Monk's Bar's 5,000. And that was it. There was absolutely <laughs> zero thought behind it whatsoever, other than um, I couldn't use the name that I had on Yahoo Chat. That was it. I bet you were gutted because with a name like Monkey Nuts 19, I bet you pulled all the women. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> ASL. <laughs> so it was one of those things you never th- actually thought at the time, but um, uh, girls that send you pictures like fam etc you can just speak it to somebody but you see like catfish and stuff nowadays like god knows who or what you were speaking to some big dirty <laughs> 45 year old man <laughs> yeah you were talking to monkey nuts 25 <laughs> <laughs> exactly but i don't know one of the uh video series you do on your channel is um you do you look at the games master and a bad influence and do commentary on that and which i really enjoy watching do you find it yeah. funny when you watch them back and you can see how technology has moved on from what they were predicting and things on these shows? Yeah, I, I like yeah, I like watching them just because it was one of my favorite things back in the day. Do you know what I mean like Games Master, Bad Influence, the only decent programs like that? But it's just cool when you see reviews for stuff or technology that's coming out. Even that oh, I hated the, was it Z right Z right that that dude in America Z right yeah. <laughs> and they're like, that was bad influence. And they're like, he's like, oh my God, we got this new technologies. And it's like, no, that's never happened to me. And it's not going to happen. But yeah. But no, it's just uh, two of my favorite um, programs growing up. The, the, the sad thing is, and you, some of the shows, I actually remember watching them live. Like you just said, is it, I remember when Z Wright was on Mortal Kombat s- s- set and he was there. And I remember watching that live when it were on. Yeah, it's cool. But it's bizarre. It's just one of these things that I just randomly done one day, and I was like, oh, "I'll just do it." Like people watch it, cool. If they don't, they don't, sort of thing. But I've been to like events and stuff, eh? and some random people going, "Oh, it's the guy. Have you watched his Games Master?" It's like, dude, I'm just talking nonsense watching a 25 minute program. If you like it, that's fine. But it's nothing special. They obviously don't know you're in real life, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Do, do, do you miss, because again, it's something I miss, going to like the replay shows in Blackpool and stuff because obviously what's happening. I do miss some of them. I don't, I don't miss... It's funny, because did you ever go to the Manchester Expo where it was huge and it were a bit? It lost a bit of its finesse? But I do no, miss I the Blackpool that, ones. I've been, uh, I've been a few Blackpool ones, and then we had like an arcade club meet-up sort of thing. But I like them, in the, I like them for the sense that the, meeting the people that I know... Do you know what I mean? Made some friends over the years, etc. That's probably the main thing, meeting friends. Yes, you spend a bit of time looking at all the things. Do I buy anything? Not really half the time, I'll be honest with you. Um, but I like them in that sense. But I find it incredibly, incredibly awkward if you're walking about and somebody just goes, monkey spots. You turn around, <laughs> you go, oh, watch your videos. You're like, cool. <laughs> it's like instant awkward mode activated. It could be worse. They could be shouting monkey nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's monkey nuts. <laughs> but I just find it weird, eh? Like, um, yeah, I don't like people, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you get embarrassed easily. Aye, probably people that I don't know, yes. So if, if somebody comes up and somebody done it one time, I was sitting with a whole bunch of other YouTubers, 2 and blah, 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 and some guy came down and just plunked his ass at our table and started speaking, and I was like, oh, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> But yeah, oh, did you go to your, like your happy place? Which is <laughs> couldn't mean anything. <laughs> no, I just find it awkward. Like, uh, uh, it's just an instant wave of embarrassment, and then just try and chart through it. Aye. 
but that means you've actually made it on YouTube when people recognise you. That's it. Must be a nice Maybe. feeling that somebody's actually watched your videos. When I knew I made it, I was standing in the line for a nightclub in a local town. Some random person like Monkey Spice. <laughs> I was like, I've got no idea who you are. I was like, oh yeah. You turned oh, around and waved, and actually the guy in front was called that. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? But it's just it's just bizarre. It, it, it is bizarre, but it's funny how it's that like, um, four degrees of, or whatever it's called, where things all link together. Because I always think, obviously, because of you, I met Andy because I saw your video and thought, oh, that's where I live, and got chatting yeah. to Andy, and then and then I got to know you and obviously other people who were as friends. I think it's weird how fate and that four degrees of separation sometimes works. Yeah, bizarre. You're welcome for introducing you to us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm still having the therapy, but yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> hey, this is one of your good days. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, speaking of like arcade cabs and stuff, and so obviously you bought the quiz machine that we'll not really talk about that disappeared into wherever it went without buttons. But um, the new machine you've got, the is it uh, Mario Three on it? Super Mario Three is it on it? Oh, to look, aye, it is. It's just over there. I can't move the camera. It's mounted. Um, but aye, Super Mario Three. Quite a nice cab. So, what, what is it like? A is it like a, a jammer board, or is it got games on, or is it like a retro pie, or what? What, what is it? It's a boy that makes them. Um, and he uh, Newcastle-ish way somewhere near Newcastle. So he's not that far away. And it was um, he makes a few of them actually. Because when I went to his house, he had that, and he had like a Mortal Kombat one as well. But it doesn't look like you know you can buy kits on ebay it doesn't look like it's a kit and it's not anything that i've seen before so i don't know if he's literally just does them from scratch himself sort of thing but it's it's basically um a raspberry pi is the easiest way to say it but um, so it is a pie cave then mate is, is it um how many games is it pretty good then is it like um has it got like hyperspin or some front end on it so you can select what game you want and etc um, I can't remember. You've never turned it on, have you? You're just going to tell me he's sat there. Hold on. You don't have to answer it's this if got, you don't want to. It's not got hyperspin on it, but um, it's got, it's got, it's got another thing. It's got, <laughs> it's got things on it. What do things? And yeah, it's probably a uh, what's the name? Pi K or I'm something like, like that. A completely technological inept person here. Hold on, I'll tell you what's going on because I've downloaded them. Um, other things for it. Hold on. I don't know what's going on it. If you don't, it's it's fine. If you don't want to answer it, it's just because I would like. I like it. I like the look of it. I think it's a nice machine. It looks. It looks smart. It looks like your typical thing. I can't remember, like retro station type thing, but like a different skin on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Someone along those lines. But it is. It's good. Um, I've not used it much simply because I was actually going to get a bigger um, SD card for it and then put a different image on it. Um, but it's decent. The only thing is, which does my head in a little bit about it, is the way he's made it, like the control panel doesn't come off or anything. So like he can't change the buttons easily or the joysticks easily without somehow trying to get in from the back, which is a, it's probably doable, but really, really awkward. But the nice machines, like you did a decent job on them. So you're telling me, you expect me to believe you were going to change the buttons of it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's gonna do a three. What do you mean? What, what do you mean change? You mean just put like a light under them or something? Or I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway. yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Obviously, you're into the same. You like emulation and stuff. On I know that, and um, you've been at, at, same as me. You toy with the coin ops um, one, which I think is pretty good. I like the ease of it, and how it's. You can just put the packs on. Do you enjoy playing stuff like that on the PC? I do. I used to probably do a lot more on the PC. Um, I've got all the coin up packs, I think, that, or the, what is it, coin ups 2 packs or whatnot that have been released today. I've still actually make them live, so to speak, workable. But I used to have loads and loads of different emulation things on the PC, but I think a hard drive died or something like that. So I've got like a Spectrum emulator, I think, is the only thing currently set up, sort of thing. Bye. Emulation is it a dirty word? That's another conversation for another day. But no, it's good. It's, it's just the fact that everything's there accessible. But yeah, I've dabbled with emulators since university, sort of time. And I think yeah, and I think it's like 
everything's got its place. Whether you don't like them, don't use them. If you do use them, it's as simple as that. And if you want to use the original stuff, use the original stuff. It, it's like everybody yeah. likes their niche thing, don't they? So. Yeah, there's no point in being a snobby twat about it. It's probably the nicest way. Do you know what I mean? Oh, he's, uh, he's, not, uh, he's not the same. He's not in our, uh, in our circle of only spending £300 for a cartridge, you know, et cetera. <laughs> the problem is, if I spent that kind of money, I wouldn't dare use it in case it broke. It's the thing, eh? Not many people have got that so expendable, especially with the prices going up and up and up and up and up, like uh, Earthbound or something like that. You're not going to buy that unless you're a mental collector so the only way the only way nowadays a lot of people are ever going to experience some of the games is through emulation yeah definitely it, I, I liken it to antiques and in that kind of thing there comes a point where it's not you don't want to use it anymore so if you bought a teapot for a million pound you're not going to make a cup of tea in it are you you're going to put it somewhere safe and keep it safe so you can use it as an asset and i think games get yeah. that well you get to a certain amount of cost and that's when a game becomes like that yeah, but arcade games as well. Like, you, what, you're going to have a whole warehouse of the various different arcade machines. No. Um, meme, brilliant. Yeah. It's funny because um, emulation and sort of piracy, in a way, has kept a lot of these games alive that, that would have just died. Because, like you say, you wouldn't have had some of the clones and some of the versions if it wasn't for yeah. things like me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I was I was amazed when I first discovered you could play arcade games on your computer. I remember, um, I think it was before like some Mame could do it, there was a separate Teenage Mutant Ninja Stroke Hero Turtles emulator that was being developed back in the day. I think that was maybe even when I was at university. But yeah. It, it, it's... Um... There's, there's like certain memories you have with that like say the first one i always remember is the first time i heard an mp3 play on a computer when it would be downloaded from the internet i thought oh it's never going to play like the real thing i thought it was going to be like a midi file and it played now like wow that's amazing and then the yeah. second time was probably when ultra hle came out the n64 emulator because that that blew me yeah. away as well i had um i had internet in my halls and it was you paid a part of a package and you got it, it was super fast. But I think something went wrong or it was down. And I had Ultra HL and I wanted Zelda. So I then had to do it through my phone connection and download the ROM. And seriously, I, it cost me a stupid amount of money because I decided to download it through the phone line rather than through the internet connection. But yeah, I remember Ultra HLE coming out. Yeah. It, it was. Um... It was what it was a groundbreaking emulator at the time. It, I, it was on Dave's Vintage Gaming or something. I downloaded it from some some website or something like that. Because there weren't there weren't as many obviously websites with emulation on them because obviously the internet was in its infancy and but now it, you can get them you can get them anywhere. Then it's good. It, it's good if you just want a quick blast on something as well and don't want to set everything. You just want a quick five minute game or something. It's like today, I've done a, a video on Star Trek and playing the game. It was I loved it. Star Trek um, Captain's Chair. And I got really engrossed in it, you know what I mean? Just and it took two seconds to set up, whereas normally you'd have to get the thing, set the P, other PC up, stick Windows ninety five. And it, what took literally two set two minutes would have took twenty thirty minutes. And by that time, you can guarantee you'd have had conflicts on something, something not working, and yeah. you get fed up on it, so you don't end up playing it. So it's good yeah, for some definitely. things. You, again, go back to like consoles and stuff. You, you see a game, you think you like, you're going to spend a hundred pounds on a cartridge, get it, think it's rubbish. Uh, emulation, just blip, blop, blip, blop. Aye. Have you got a favourite arcade game that you like playing? Um, again, it's probably really nostalgia driven. Like uh, the arcade arcades, if you like, weren't really a thing in the Scottish borders unless the little, um, like the gypsy shows. <laughs> you like, do you know what I mean the show, the, the fair, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, you call it the, the shows, walk. don't you? Because I got that Aye, confused me when I came up visit to visit and. Obviously, our friend was saying, "Oh, we're going to the shows," and I'm thinking, "What is it like? Uh, like London, where you go to like West End, and it's like a fair with a waltz." And I'm thinking, "This is the fair. This is the show." <laughs> Aye, you've got like a fifty-fifty percent chance if you're going to lose a limb going on one of the rides, sort of thing. But <laughs> and so they had all the rides and stuff, the waltzers and all that malarkey. But then they'd have like big cabin hut type things, and they were just lined out with arcade machines left, right, and center. Um, so things like. Like Robocop arcade machine, um, Shadow Dancer, Turtles, Final Fight, all those sort of things there that are just probably my favourite, not because they're necessarily great, but just because 
I remember walking around, um, walking around the arcade machines, and you hear the Robocop, ding, 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 like the insert coin thing flash. And it was awesome. It, it's funny you say that because in your mind's eye, like you say, because we had something similar, like you say, the little fair arcade, and you can hear in your mind's eye, you can hear the Nancy at Chase HQ. That's what I always hear when you go into an arcade. Yeah. The Terminator Two one, an Operation Operation Wolf, and that you know, I mean, their track I, streams. Op- I, Operation Wolf. I, I remember, I remember, Mum can I play that? I son. This whole thing vibrating. It's like whoa. But this then, then awesome. to be able to buy that from the shop and play it on your own own computer, yeah, it wasn't as good, but it was just like magic, weren't it? That's the thing eh? with arcade machines back in the day. Um, it was a completely different experience. Because you might have played Gauntlet on your Spectrum or whatnot, and then you saw it in the Leisure Centre, for example, is where I saw it, and you played it there, and I was like, whoa, mind-blown. They, they, they just do so much more than home consoles or computers at the time. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was almost like a package, wasn't it, like you say, that I don't think kids today get, because you got you played it in the arcade, you then waited till it came out, you bought it on the home system. Yeah, it wasn't as good, but you played it to death, even if it looked nothing like it, like hard Hi. driving on the spectrum one of my favorite spectrum games it i love it i love our driving on the spectrum for some reason even though it's nothing like the original arcade apart from the gameplay slightly so yeah but in your head you imagined it was double dragon on the spectrum that's horrendous in my head it was an arcade machine arcade you used to go tell people in fact that, that saying arcade perfect you'd never hear now because there is it's arcade perfect right. and it was about as much arcade perfect as far away as you could get yeah, totally. But aye, it was the whole, whole part of the magic of the the eighties or whatnot, eh? Eighties, early nineties yeah. computers. Aye, because yeah. you used to always see like the massive generational leaps and the differences between home and the arcade. Nowadays, it's just like I always wonder: do do kids or do teenagers nowadays get excited about a new console coming out or a new game coming out, or do they just go, "New game, cool"? Oh, it looks like the game the last. Uh, I don't know. What the, what the what the thoughts are, what they expect. Whereas back in the day, you'd go into, you'd get a magazine, you'd read about it for ages, you'd go into Woolies, you'd see it on the shelf, you'd pick it up, you'd dribble over it, you'd put it back on the shelf because you're not going to have enough money for it for another two weeks. Do you know what I mean? There was always that anticipation and excitement, but kids nowadays, I don't know if they sort of feel the same thing or if everything's just available readily on demand. Do, do you still, it's interesting because I remember going into Boots and playing NES on like the demo systems and the and mega do they still yeah. do that i know i know they did it with the 360 and i think i've seen a switch but i've not seen any of the later consoles in like um do you s- the only unit. place i've seen it is and i'm not it was like the playstation 4 and the xbox one was probably um tesco is the only place that i've ever seen do that sort of thing still where but half the time they're switched off but i've got massive memories of playing um Super Mario World on a SNES and it was either Curry's or Comet in the local town. Um, some weird educational Sesame Street game on the CDI. It was horrendous. <laughs> we, used to, we used to go to school, um, go to this shop. It was either Curry's or Comet, one of them. And they'd always have displays of something on. You'd go in and play on it until you got chucked out. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> it. We're closing now. Okay. <laughs> and but I... Um, the same shop, funnily enough, burning rubber on the field arm yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I never wanted got that. Although I did want it, but <laughs> it's not a bad game. Ocean burning rubber. It's one of the good games. On are you talking about the actual system though, or the game? So I, I, I used to walk past that same shop that we used to always go in and play the machines, if you like, that were on display on um, to be fiddled with. Um, that same shop always used to have um, a TV in the window with the. What's it called? GX Amstrad? GX 9000, weren't it, I think? Nah. Is it? I'm not sure. That's what I thought. I might be wrong. 4000. 4000, sorry. That's GX 4000. So there would always used to be one of them on display, and it always had burning rubber playing in the window. And me, who came from Atari 2600, then a Spectrum, obviously that looked like a massive step up. And I used to always want to, even um, oh, another random thing, you know the Atari console stroke keyboard thing? that you can put together and it's got all the little pastel colored buttons on it all right yeah yeah i can't remember what it's called but i, I saw that and i was like i want that was that, that the xl cool. atari xl or the xc or something so, like, xc i think went it something like that it had like the, the four pastel buttons so you could turn it from a console into a computer with a keyboard 
Yeah, but like all Atari's machines, it was basically a, a slightly different Atari 2600, unfortunately. Yeah. Right, well, Jim, thank you very much for taking the time out to tonight. I'll not keep you any longer because um, I know you've got a hectic schedule of playing games and loading things onto eBay, so I'll um, say <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for taking the time out. And um, I'll welcome. put a link to your channel in the in the in the comments below. And yeah, and my eBay. Oh yeah, oh okay. and your eBay link, yeah, and yeah.